Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my presentation. My name is Amin Topa, and we are from University Technology Petronas. And on behalf of my, of my team, I will be presenting about our research, which is the development of a numerical wave tank for the study of the wave current interaction. Since the topic is also mechanical, so I will try to explain as much as I can, as fast as I can. Okay, so this is uh, the outline of the presentation. We have the introduction, methodology, simulation, and the result validation, and the conclusion. And uh, what is a wave tank? As you can see, the video here is a sample of a wave tank. So I'm uh, in our research, we're studying the wave current interaction. So what are waves and what are currents and what are the interaction between them and why they are important. Wave actually is caused by winds and uh, it's caused by the friction between the winds and the water surface. So if you go to the ocean, to the beach, when you see what uh, the thing that you are seeing is actually the waves that coming up and down, the difference in the level of the sea, that's what we call wave. And uh, currents on the other side is below the surface, so we cannot see it. And it's caused by the different densities of the water. The water in different uh, places have different densities, different temperatures, and this causes the flow of the water. And that flow of the water be, uh, the, in the ocean, we call it currents. And the interaction between both of them are important. Why? Because both of them are waves. Uh, uh, the, the wave and the current, as you can see here, both of them are uh, can be expressed can be expressed as waves, and then uh, they can interact with each other and interfere with each other. And this might cause the wave to go very high. Uh, we, we call it freak. Uh, we call it freak wave. And this is very, can be very dangerous. This is a quick uh, literature review. So uh, the first thing that you can see from the literature review to study is to study the wave current interaction. We have a numerical approach, analytical approach, experimental approach. Okay, experimental approach have its limitation and numerical uh, and analytical uh, approach can be difficult to solve for big cases. And the other thing that you can observe from this quick, quick literature review is the lack of the study in the, uh, in the field of wave current interaction. And the second problem statement is that the commercial softwares that are available are very computational expensive, meaning it will take very, very long time to do the simulation even for the simplest case. Therefore, our objective is one to develop a numerical wave tank, an efficient one to study the wave current interaction, like the, the video in the second slide. That's an experimental wave tank. What we're trying to do is a numerical wave tank and, and uh, we try to make it efficient so it doesn't take a long time. And the second objective is of course to validate this uh, uh, model that we have developed. And the last but not least is to conduct cases of the interaction between wave and current and see how things go on. So this is the method uh, methodology. We have three stages. The first stage is actually to solve the Euler equations. Euler equations uh, are the wave equations that we are using for our study. And we transform them in what we call it sigma coordinate. In the next two slides, I will explain what is the sigma coordinate. The next step is to decretize this equation, meaning we transform them in a mathematical uh, form into a form that is understandable by the software or by the coding language. And then after we develop the code, we impose the boundary, uh, boundary layers, meaning the input and the output of our tank, and then we solve for the pressure. And after we solve for the pressure, we go to the next step. If the pressure uh, okay and it uh, agrees with the analytical values, then we go to the next step. We update the vertical velocity and the surface water for the next step. So it's, we are going in a loop. We start when time is equal to zero, we solve. And if things okay, we go to the next uh, time step t plus one and so on and so forth. 
And uh, after we're done with stage number two, sorry, after we're done with stage number two, we go to stage number three, which is the increment of layers of the model. What we mean by increment of the layers? As you can see here, I mentioned here, single layer. So when coding, we start coding with the easiest things first. So we start coding our wave tank with only one layer of cell or of grid. Then we increase more and more to make our model more complicated and more accurate. So these are the equations that we are using. We are based our code on these equations. They are the Euler equations. We have momentum equation and continuity equation. And these are the boundary conditions. Like the inlet and the outlet happens in the inlet and the outlet and the, at the flat surface of the sea, what happens? And also at the free surface of the wave, what happens? That's what we means by what we mean by the con boundary condition. Now the sigma coordinate. This sigma coordinate or sigma model on the left is what we are inputting in our code. This on the left is the normal coordinate or the Cartesian coordinate, the X and Y. So when you go and see the real waves, this is what you see going up and down. But what we do, what we propose is to transform this one into the sigma model. Why? Because in sigma model, the free surface is straight. So when it is straight, it is easier to solve the mathematical equation. But instead, if you want to put the grid like this, then uh, it will be a bit difficult because uh, here it is not straight line. So we have to model what we call the dry uh, the dry region or the air. But here we don't dry, we don't model any air. We just 100% model the water because our surface or our grid will follow the surface of the water. And this is what we call the grid or the cells. And as you can see, we have only one grid for the first step or the first stage. And uh, here is to transform the coordinate from Cartesian coordinates to sigma model. We have to add these two equations. And since we transform the coordinates, we also need to transform the uh, continuity equation and the momentum equation. Okay, and these are the equation that we are used to transform from the Euler equation, the standard form into the uh, sigma model. And last step or the second last is the discretization of the equation. What does this mean? This means that we take the equations from the previous slides and we put them in a form that the code or the software or the computer can understand, which is actually the uh, matrices or the matrix, because we want to code is the best way is to code using matric, uh, matrices. And that's what we're doing here. We are transforming the mathematical equation and we express them into a matrix form. And you can see this is the implementation in the MATLAB code. First, I want to highlight, you can see here, the time on the left, this is the real time. And the time, as you can see, is very uh, fast, which means our code is efficient and we don't need to wait a long time to simulate this case. You can see this is a wave tank where, with the length of, 100 meter is very long. And if you want to take or use the commercial software, then it will take very long time. And the last thing that I want to mention quickly in this uh, case or in this uh, video, you can see here the wave are interacting with each other and is going out of control. And if you remember the small wave tank, the experimental wave tank that I put in the beginning of this video, the second slide, you can also see the wave is reflecting from the boundary and interacting with the coming wave. So they are uh, making things out of control. OK, the results, uh, we don't have so uh, many, so don't worry. The first thing you can see, this is the standing wave. The standing wave, as you can see, uh, the solid line is the analytical equation. And the present model is with the crosses. And you can see we have a very good uh, uh, agreement between the two. And this is the case of shale, shallow water, meaning the tank is not very deep. And here, a standing wave in a deep water. 
Okay, you can see here we have some uh, variation in the in the results between the analytical and the uh, in our code, and that's because, as I mentioned, we are using only one single layer, and with increasing of the layers, we will have more and more. Uh, uh, we, we will have better and better results. Okay, second last result is solitary wave. Solitary wave when we when we have like a single wave, like a tsunami. Uh, maybe we see here three waves, but this is actually one wave. This is at time equal to, let's say, zero. This is time, let's say, equal to 30. And this is time equal to 90 seconds. So they are actually moving, but I did not make the video for this. For Sorry for that. So we, you can see here, this is also matching with our case, with our uh, code or our model. And as you can see, we have the length of this, uh, what we call it, of this tank, which is 1,000 meter, which is very, very long. And if we were to model this one using the available software, it will take very, very long time, weeks, if not months. And the depth of this tank, you can see, is 10 meter here. So this is the pro uh, progressive wave, meaning we have here we have solitary wave, meaning we have we have only one wave. Progressive wave, meaning we have a lot of waves, a lot of number of waves, and you can see here also the results are matching. So as a conclusion, we what we have did right now so far is only the single layer sigma model, meaning the whole depth. We model it with only one cell. And despite that, we are getting good results, very, very good results in the shallow uh, waters. But for uh, deep waters, we have some variation in the results. And we could, we believe that we can get better results if we increase the number of layers, which is actually the future work, because this research actually is still under progress. So that's all for me. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I open the floor if you have any question and answer. And sorry for taking extra time. OK, uh, thank you, Mr. Amin Topa from UTT in Express. A very interesting uh, study. Uh, uh, since this is a mechanical language engineer, uh, allow me to uh, uh, ask you a few questions. So uh, you mentioned that uh, the, you're using MATLAB for your simulations, yes? Yes, yes. And, uh, and then uh, you mentioned that if you're using uh, commercial uh, software, maybe like NCS is going to take a huge amount of time. Yes. Okay. But then, our, uh, okay. we are so, using so the. How long do you really, uh, do these simulations? Minutes? Sorry? How, how long do you uh, typically uh, you know, conduct the simulations? Minutes or hours? Uh, in, in our code or in the software? In, in your code. Uh, in you, in my code, as is actually as you can see, uh, the coding. Of course, we need to. It takes some time. We need to make sure that everything is correct. But actually, this is uh, real time. This video is real time. You can see the wave is going in front of you, and you don't need to wait any time. Like if we use the commercial software, we need we need to make the model and we need to run it first, and that running takes a lot of time. Uh, it might take weeks or even uh, months if the wave is very, very big, like uh, 100 meters. Okay. Uh, and, and, the, and the reason that why commercial software are taking much time, because they are, like we call it, general tools. They can do different type of waves, different type of simulations. But in our code, we only focus on the wave only we're, we're not talking and we're not trying to model any type of uh, water behavior only the wave and the current okay uh because uh i i don't quite see the the effects of uh, uh why why i see here is just the wave uh, you know uh, amplitude but i can't really see the, the effects of uh, currents uh, on it um oh okay yes uh, that's a good question because uh, uh, as i mentioned this is the uh, the first step, which is the si the single layer, okay. as you can see here, this is also this is all one layer. But uh, I make it a bit, uh, I I drag it to make it tall. So if we increase the number of of uh, layers here, let's say we have two or three or four, then we can input the wave. Uh, sorry, we can input the velocity or the the current below the wave. Okay. 
Okay, uh, quite interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Sam Topa and uh, okay. friends. You're welcome.